Well, good morning, Shiloh. It's so good to see you this morning. It's good to hear the rumbling of voices all around the room. I tell you, over this time of COVID, we've had some Sundays where it was a little too quiet in the room. And I love to come in and hear you fellowshipping and catching up and love seeing your faces. And uh, we are looking forward to a wonderful day of worship today. I wanted to start off with just a couple of scriptures here out of Psalm 107. And it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And so that's what we want to do today. We want to say so. We want to talk about God's goodness. We want to praise him. And because you know what? Even in these crazy times, our great and wonderful God is faithful to us. Amen. And he's the one that we're here to worship and praise today. It's going to be a good day uh, in God's house. So I'm glad that you're here. I want to say a special word of welcome to our guest. Uh, you bless us with your presence and we're so thankful for you. I want to ask you to do something for me. In your worship bulletin, there's a little tear off corner called the connection card. And if you would take just a minute, hopefully there should be pins in the back of the chairs. If you would take a moment and fill that connection card out, it tears out. And then when you leave today out in the foyer on the round table, there's a basket. And as you exit the doors on this side of the building, there are baskets. You can drop those connection cards in those baskets as you leave. I love to know you're here. I love to be able to pray for you. So that serves a couple purposes and we thank you for doing that also if you have any special prayer needs i've already filled mine up this morning on the back of that same connection card you can let us know how we can pray specifically for you this week and again just tear it out drop them in those baskets and i will get those and it would be our joy to be able to pray for you this week and we certainly have a lot of prayer needs uh, in our families, in our church, in our community, in our nation. Uh, so let's continue, and, and, and around the world, let's continue to lift each other up and pray for each other and love each other during these days and look to the Lord. You know what? We're going to make it. Amen? We're going to make it through. Spring is just around the corner, and I'm looking forward to that. And I want to say that today we are privileged to have a couple special guests with us. Uh, April and Mallory, it's good to have you from Isaiah 117 House, and they're going to be sharing with us later in the service, and I'll say more about that here in a little while. Would you look at your neighbor, give them a wave and a big smile, let them know you're glad they're here, and Benji, come on us and lead us in worship this morning. Please stand as we begin our worship singing, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. Stand up for Jesus. 
Well, good morning. In light of uh, Valentine's Day, and I've seen a lot of people posting some sweet messages to their spouses, I couldn't help but think about God's love letter to us. And more specifically in John 3, chapter 6, or John chapter 3, verse 16. And many of you know this verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whoever would believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Um, Bill Gaither penned these words, and I really love this song. He says, one of the verses, Could we would think the oceans fill, and were the skies of parchment made, were every stalk on earth a quill, and every man a scribe by trade. To write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry, nor could the scroll contain the whole. Though stretched from sky to sky. And so wherever you are this morning, whatever may, you may be dealing with, if you don't hear anything else today, I want you to know that God loves you more than anything in this world. He loves you more than you could ever imagine. And he wants you to know him in a very personal way this morning. Would you pray with me? Father God, we are thankful for your love. This unconditional love that we didn't deserve on anything that we have done. Lord, that you gave your only son as a precious gift and sacrifice on our behalf so that we could have a relationship with you, God. And so we're so thankful for that this morning. But we're also so thankful for the love that we share um, as human beings, God. I know that we were created for community. And um, it just brings my heart joy to see my church family gather together this morning. And so thank you for the love that we share. Um, and, and know that it's all, all made possible because of the love that you gave. So Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. May you um, go use the Holy Spirit to, to give us uh, the inspiration and the desire and the passion for others outside of this church in our community that we would go and, and share that same love with them. Lord, we love you and we thank you and ask all this in your holy and precious name. Amen. All right, boys and girls, as I look around, it's good to see those smiling little faces around the room today. Listen, all our children, give me a wave and smile at me this morning. I want to wish you a happy Valentine's Day. I sure love you guys. And uh, I love being able to see you. Thank you for your cards and hugs. And one of my favorite things on Sunday morning, walking through the doors and the children coming to give me hugs. I have a hug quotient and has to be met every Sunday morning. And they help me. And it's good to see them this morning. And boys and girls, I was thinking, since it's Valentine's Day, I wanted to talk about God's love. But I want us to think about it in a little different way. How many of you, how many of our boys and girls like to be first? I, I see one. Thank you for that hand. Amen. You know, most of us like to be first, Spence. That's the truth. If we're running a race... What do you, do you want to come in second? You want to come in first, don't you? Yeah. Okay, you like to come in first? Absolutely, I understand. And you know, we like to come in first on so many things. And listen, there's one thing that we need to come in first on, and I'm going to tell you what that is. We need to come in first when it comes to loving people. Listen to what the scripture says in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 19. It says, we love him. In other words, we love the Lord because, here's why, we love the Lord because he first loved us. Do you know that God loved you first before you ever knew him? God knew you. Before you were ever a thought in your family, with your mom and dad, before you were ever a thought, God already knew you and already loved you. In fact, God knew you when Jesus died on the cross for your sin. God knew you then, and guess what? He loved you. And that's exactly why Jesus went to the cross. God loved you first. And you know the Bible says, listen... God pours so much love out on us, it's more than we can contain. Because God loves us so much, we've got love to give away. Did you know that? 
And you know, as God's children, we need to be the first to love others. Say, Pastor Glenn, what do you mean by that? Well, you know, sometimes maybe you go to school and you walk in your classroom and there's a new kid there. And you know, sometimes we wait for them to speak to us, don't we? Well, if we're going to love first, we need to speak to them first, don't we? In fact, to love first means that we need to be the first one, boys and girls, that sees that kid who always sits by themselves in class or during a game or when you have a break or a recess or anything. That one kid who sits by themselves, you need to be the first to love that kid and go and be their friend. Amen? So there are a lot of ways that God wants us to be first when it comes to loving others. But this is what I want you to know. God loved you first and he loves you so much that he wants you to be the one to love others just like he loves you. And that's a big challenge. Adults, that's a challenge for us. And that's going to be the thrust of our message today. Boys and girls, let me share that verse with you again. We love him, we love God, because he first loved us. And that's 1 John 4, 19. And remember, because God loves us so much, we can be the first to love others. Everyone around us, no matter who they are. Would you pray with me? Father, we are so thankful for your love. I'm thankful for these boys and girls, Lord. And Father, I pray they would know how much you love them. And Father, every time they see a cross, they would remember how much you love them, how you stretched your arms out to love them. And Father, help us to love others the way you love us. No matter if they're different from us, if they don't have any friends, if if maybe they, their, their clothes are old or, or have holes in them or whatever the case may be. Help us to love every person because you love them. Because you love us and you've given us enough love to love them. Help these boys and girls love everybody as they grow. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Thank you boys and girls. Romans 5, 8 says, God proves his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Would you stand once more as we sing How Deep the Father's Love for Us? Oh, 
privilege today to have a very wonderful ministry with us. Um, and I'm excited for them to come and share with you today about Isaiah 117 House. If you live in our community, most likely you've heard of them by now. And so I wanted us all to learn more about their ministry. And it is a wonderful ministry. And let me just say very briefly, when, when children are removed from their homes because of concern for their welfare, that's a very scary and a very troubling time for those children. And that's where Isaiah 117 house comes in because they try and want to be there for those children. Um, I'm not going to go any further because I want them to share about this wonderful ministry. Uh, Shiloh, would you please welcome this morning April Gillespie and Mallory Griffin from Isaiah 117. Good morning. Thank you so much for having us. Um, I got to attend my home church at 9 o'clock this morning, and so... It just worked perfectly for me to get two doses of Jesus today, which is great because I need it every single day. Um, I'm Mallory. This is April. We're the program coordinators for Sevier County's Isaiah 117 House. Can you raise your hand if you have heard of Isaiah 117 House? Awesome. Wonderful. Okay. Um, currently, in Sevier County, we have 200 children in um, foster care in DCS custody. That is our, our hometown. That's um, the kiddos that our kiddos go to school with. We see them um, on basketball teams and um, in our libraries and at the Boys and Girls Club and in our school systems. So 200 of our kiddos are currently in custody in Sevier County. On removal day, you and I know that they're entering safety um, sometimes they just, they cannot live with their biological family members. But on that day, it is extremely um, traumatic and hard and scary. And they feel alone and they feel like they did something wrong. And they go and they sit and they wait at our local DCS office. And um, there's fluorescent lighting and there's conference rooms. There's a visitation room with a couch. Um, that unfortunately, if they have to stay overnight, they would sleep on that couch in the visitation rooms. That wait, um, we would all like to think, would just be a few hours until foster placement or another family member could take them, um, but sometimes it's days. In the summer, um, there was a kiddo in and out of our DCS office for a little over three weeks. So for three weeks, a kiddo um, who said goodbye to everything they knew um, spent three weeks in a government building and we feel that it's unkind and we can do better for our kids here in Sevier County. We don't feel um, that the call to love all of our kiddos was ever the state's call. It's our call as people who want to love and serve Jesus extremely well. So Isaiah 117 House's mission is to lavishly love every child who enters foster care. It's to walk alongside our caseworkers and it's to equip the family members or the foster homes that will say yes to that kiddo. Currently, um, we have the joy of being foster parents. And so you would get a call and they may say, we have a sibling group of three. Um, they've just been removed. They have absolutely no possessions to their name. Um, they're dirty, they're hungry, they've been awake at the office for 14 hours, and they all have lice. It is so hard for anyone to say, by all means, bring them straight to my house. I can't wait. Um, with an Isaiah 117 house, it, it changes that call, and it changes uh, a foster parent's ability to say yes, because that call now looks like we have a sibling group of three. They have gotten to stay the night at Isaiah 117 house. They have clothing and outfits and brand new shoes for three or four days. Um, the local church made up 14 frozen meals that we're gonna stock in your freezer. Um, they've all had baths, they've all had lice treatment. Their bellies are full, they have, they have all their school supplies. Um, can you say yes? Can you say yes? Um, just by a huge leap of faith to take these kiddos. And so, um, we know that the system um, is rather complicated 
and we're not trying to change the system. We're trying to change that horrible, awful, no good day in, in that kiddo's life because that's something that we can change. We, uh, we broke ground. No, we did not break ground. We, we're just going to speak that <laughs> right into existence. This year we're going to break ground. But we, um, we, we had our first kickoff in November of 2019. And then the whole world shut down because of this pandemic. And um, God has been so good and so faithful. And we're currently fully funded. We had to raise $150,000 um, in our community. We're fully funded, plus more. Um, we've been given a piece of land by some generous donors that we can build our house on. And we're in the works with a general contractor um, on a break ground date. And so through the world shutting down and through the scary times, um, we've seen God's goodness time and time and time again, which inspires us to speak life into breaking ground this year and having a house this year. And so April here is going to share a little bit more about how you can be involved with Isaiah 117 House. I'll add before that, that when Mallory and I came on board um, with this ministry, we had no idea that every time we passed the Golden Corral in Sevierville in 66, that there was likely a child sitting in there waiting. Um, we hear about one who would be removed this weekend, and we're not sure why. We, we don't always know the whys, um, but this child could be in the office for a couple of days. And um, when we knew that there was a better way, we said it's, it's, it isn't good enough. It's not good enough. And I'm sure everyone in here would agree that sitting in a government office um, is not good enough. Um, years ago, we did not know what DCS stood for. Maybe there's somebody in the room who could use an explanation. It's Department of Children's Services. When the founder of, of the Isaiah 117 house um, was led to foster, she had no idea what that stood for. All the, all the acronyms and all the um, initials for everything. So she had to, had to learn too. So we're learning together. Um, lots of people do say, how can we be involved? Right now, we are striving for awareness. Like I said, when you drive past the DCS office in Sevier County, um, you may not know that there's likely a child sitting there. So awareness, how can you start that conversation? Um, we have these little bracelets. Um, this, people say, what, what is that? What is that on your arm? Or what does your t-shirt mean? Um, that is a good awareness tool um, that we can explain to ease trauma, to lessen trauma on removal day. Here's our plan. Here's what's been laid on our heart so that we can lavishly love on these kiddos on removal day. Um, we could have the kids from an hour to 24 hours per the DCS commissioner's permission. Um, and we just want to absolutely lavishly love on them while, while they are in the home. Um, we are asking that everyone do start those conversations. Um, if you have an opportunity to do that, you can do that with your ladies group or with your uh, men's basketball team. You can always start a conversation about the need and let people ask questions of you. It's super simple what we, what we strive to carry out. Um, we do ask that you set your alarm every day for 117. It could just be something just for you where your watch goes off at 117 every day. And it's just a reminder to pray for the ministry, to lift it up to the Lord. Um, sometimes it doesn't have to be out loud. If you're with a client or in the middle of lunch when you're at 117, then God knows what's on your heart. I truly believe that. And um, we just want to be remembered and always lifted up to him um, at 117. So that is another way that you can help. Um, we do have something called Sock Buddies, and it's a monthly giver. If, if you give just a few dollars a month, you get a pair of socks. I know that's such a small gift, but it's just a token to remind you um, of what it is that this mission carries out. And um, that can be done online. And what am I missing? We collect things monthly. Yeah, we do. Y'all, if you've not seen something like this, it's just an absolute miracle. And <laughs> Mallory and I are nobodies. We really are. So when we came on board, we said, what in the world are two little nobodies like us? Our faith was just so small, apparently. So um, we have watched God move, and it's been such an example, such a testimony of when God's in it, there's no other explanation. These things are so huge. Um, there's no other explanation than his hand is just all over this ministry. But every single month, um, we do a collection of um, 
like for example, this month is going to be um, underclothes for teenagers. So that's gonna be your adult sizes. And we know that as soon as we make that public, the need will be met. Because for the past year, we have done this every single month. It could be pajamas, it could be socks, it could be stuffed animals or board games, everything new. We always want to give our best. Um, these needs are met every single month and it's such a miracle because again, we are nobodies. And um, uh, something that we've always heard is if, if we want to be sure that God gets the glory for all of this, he puts somebody really ill-equipped in charge. So um, that's that's kind of where, where we come in. Um, I will say, and this is uh, goes back to the Isaiah 117 scripture, um, part of that scripture says um, to defend the cause of the fatherless. But if you go before that scripture to go get the whole context here, what it says is, it talks about how God is really angry with his people. And he says, you are making me sick to my stomach. All your new moon festivals and your fancy meetings and your fancy clothes and all your showing off, it means nothing to me and it makes me sick. But then he says, to defend the cause of the fatherless in Isaiah 117. And if you move forward to Isaiah 119, it says, if you do these things and obey my command, you, I will be sure that you taste the best in the land. And we feel by following God's word and his command in working with this mission and being involved and being sure that we lavishly love on these kids, that we are able to taste the best in the land. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you guys so much. Amen. Thank you so much uh, for coming and sharing with us about Isaiah 117. And you know what? I know that God's hand is going to continue to be on that ministry. And uh, Shiloh, I pray that we're one of the churches that stay connected to them, that pray for them, that love them, that does our part, that does what we can. And so let me just say today at the end of the service, um, we're going to take up a love offering. Uh, for Isaiah 117. So if you can contribute uh, some today, whatever God would lay on your heart to Isaiah 117, um, I'll ask our greeters to be ready for that at the end of the service. Um, we've got a brief business meeting at the end of the service to vote on our budget for this year. It's been so crazy. We were supposed to do that last Sunday and we uh, had a weather date, uh, but we're going to do that briefly. But but as you exit today, we're if you can, go out the front doors and we'll have, have them there and ready to take that love offering for Isaiah 117. And, and I wanted to say also, you may have mentioned this and I may have missed it, but if you go to your Facebook page, I did that the other day, you can find a connection to Amazon that lists some needs and wants for the house and they can purchase one of those items or however many they want right there. Is that right? Yes. Because I did that the other day. And I wanted you to know that you can do that. And so that is another way that you can help and give to Isaiah 117. So, um, but we certainly commit to pray for you guys. And it's wonderful to see how God is at work um, with your ministry. If you got your Bibles, let's open them up this morning to 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. And today being Valentine's Day, I thought that how appropriate that we should consider the love of God and what it means, what it means to love big. I heard another church and uh, one of our neighbor churches, in fact, it, I won't call any names, but I used to be on staff there. Um, they did this big, they did this big uh, push for, and uh, they still do what they call love loud projects where they love on their community. They go out and they have all these projects where they love loud. They want people to know that they're loved. And so I thought, well, I can't still love loud. So we're going to love big at Shiloh. All right. So we're going to love big. A friend of mine. Um, this friend will know who they are, but uh, probably several weeks ago, I got a text from this person, and they ended the text with these words, and it stuck, and it resonated in my heart. It blessed me, but the words were, love you big. 
You know what? That blessed me. But it got me to thinking, we all need to love big. Amen? We need to understand who we are as children of God, that, that we are saved. And just like I shared with the children this morning, we have been given so much love. We have love to give. And we must do a good job at loving big. Once you truly begin to comprehend the love of God, the more it transforms your life. Amen? The more you begin to comprehend the love of God, the more it transforms your life. It changes your whole perspective and it changes how you respond to life. To people. It begins to change your priorities. I want to be so overwhelmed by the love of God. That I can't help but love. And I would say that that's what you desire as well. Have you considered the love of God? Justin quoted the hymn. The the love of God is greater far. Justin, we're on the same page today because I've got that song in my notes right here too. So I think the Lord wanted us to think on that today. A beautiful hymn written by Frederick Lehman way back in 1917. I remember Benji telling us the story of that song. But the love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes Beyond the highest star and it reaches to the lowest hell. You know, God's love reaches to the lowest of the low. I've been on mission trips. I've been in places and seen things that I'd never seen before. I saw people living in conditions that um, took my breath away. It made me realize that I live like a millionaire on most days compared to... To what they live with. And you know most of those people. Would have smiles on their faces. And one of the things we quickly found out. Is how open and receptive they were. To the love of God. And to the glorious good news of the gospel. But God's love goes beyond the highest star. It reaches to the lowest hell. Those words go on. And it says the guilty pair. Bowed down with care. God gave his son to win. His erring child he reconciled and parted from his sin. Could we with ink the ocean fill? I've always loved that imagery, Benji. And yet it doesn't do it justice. Could we with ink the ocean fill? And were the skies of parchment made? Were every stalk on earth a quill and every man a scribe by trade? To write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry. Nor could the scroll contain the whole, though stretched from sky to sky. O oh, love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong, shall forevermore endure the saints and angels' song. God's love. Because we are so loved, we ought to love each other, our neighbor, our friends, our co-workers, that person we don't know, that person who just cut us off in traffic, that person who was rude to us, that person who just let um, colorful words fly out of their mouth, every Single one. Democrat. Republican. Independent. Catholic. Hindu. Muslim. We're to love every single one. Red, yellow, black, and white. They're all created in the image of God. Amen. Jesus Christ died for them. Passionately pursues them. Passionately loves them just like he passionately pursued you and me and loves us. Let's look at the scripture in 1 John chapter 4 beginning at verse 7. 
Beloved. Listen at that. Beloved. Do you know that you're beloved? You're the apple of the Father's eye. Um, he doesn't look at you with disdain. He doesn't look at you with disgust. He doesn't look at you with, with um, disappointment. You are beloved. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. If you want a, a, a characterization of who God is, there it is in those four words. For God is love. That's who he is. Everything about God is encapsulated in those four words. For God is love. Even his holiness, even his justice, even, uh, even when he, he pours out wrath on sin, when he did that on his own son on the cross, all of that was motivated because God is love. Everything he does is based on who he is. Verse 9, in this the love of God was manifested toward us. So here it is. This is how he manifested his love toward us. That God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Listen, there it is. That's God's goal for you. That's his heart for you. That's his purpose for you. You are beloved and God has manifested his love toward you. And that he sent his son that you might live. We don't live until we meet Jesus. Amen. He brings us from death to life in verse 10. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another now let's jump ahead to verse 19 we love him because he first loved us this morning I, I want to give you just four ways that you can love big that you can be aware of God's love for you and then you can be a blessing and love others Number one, this is the first way you can love big. S study the one who loves the best. Study the one who loves the best. Study the one who loves the best. Verse 9. Listen to what it says. In this the love of God was manifested toward us. That God has sent his only begotten son to be the propitiation for our sins. Study the one who loves best. God loves best. He gave his best. He sacrificed his best for you and me. God manifested his love for us in Jesus. If you want to see what God is like, look at Jesus. He is the perfect image of the Father. If you want to know what God is like, just study the life of Jesus. Just get in the Gospels. Look in the Scripture and study Jesus. The scripture said he was the propitiation of sin. Propitiation. Does anybody want to stand up and define that for me this morning? Isn't that a funny word? It means to appease. Propitiation is a big word that means satisfaction. Because God is a holy God. His anger is and his justice burns against sin. God is holy. Amen. He is love, but he's a God who hates sin. He hates sin because of what sin does to his beloved, those he's created in his own image. And God hates sin. Uh, and he is a holy God. His anger and justice burns against sin. And he has sworn that sin will be punished. 
Now, when you think of that word propitiation to help you understand it, there must be a satisfactory payment for sin. But God said, if I punish man for his sin, man will die and go to hell. On the other hand, if I don't punish man for his sin, my justice will never be satisfied. The solution? God said that he would become our substitute. He would take the sin of mankind upon himself in agony and blood, a righteous judgment and a substitute for sin. His wrath burned out on the cross when his son died as man's propitiation for sin. And the scripture says in 1 John 4, 10, and this is love. I love how Jesus loved. Not only when we say that Jesus died on the cross, not only did he go through the horrors that we know he went through there, not only were spikes driven in his hands and wrists, not only were spikes driven through his feet, not only was a crown of thorns thrust down on his head, not only was he whipped with a cat of nine tails ripping the very flesh and even digging into the muscle off of his back. Not only did he endure all that, not only did every drop of his rich red royal blood drain from his body, but on top of that, he was met with the wrath of God over your sin and my sin. And he did that because he loves you. Therein is love. Therein is love. Can we really ever say, I cannot love that person? Because that person has offended me. I cannot love that person because that person is, is, belongs to this political party or, or that political party. I cannot love that person because they do this or because they do that. And we qualify and we, we, we judge. We take the place of God and we judge and we criticize. Can we ever really say that when you understand what God did for you and for me? When Jesus looked down from the cross, the, the very ones who put there, the very ones who mocked him, who, who, who sat at the foot of the cross playing games, uh, gambling his clothing away. And he would read the words, Father, forgive them. Because they don't know what they do. Even in his own pain and agony, when the thief on the cross cried out to him, he said, today you will be with me in paradise. His love knew no end. And he went the distance. I love how Jesus loved. Consider, consider with me this morning. When before Jesus went to the cross, how he manifested his love. As you read through the gospels, I love the story in Matthew chapter 8 where Jesus his love was manifested to a poor leper in Matthew chapter 8. A leper. And the thing I love about this story is, is everyone avoided lepers. Because they were unclean. Um, you wouldn't want to touch a leper because you might be, be diseased yourself. And they would ostracize them. They would put them out of the camp. They would put them out of the city. They had to leave their homes. They, they, they had to leave their families. And they, would, they would walk down the street. If they walked down the street, they had to yell out, unclean, unclean, get out of the way, I'm unclean. And that's the way a leper had to live. And the scripture says in Matthew 8, Jesus it was right after the Sermon on the Mount. And the multitudes had been, had been following Jesus. And this leper comes, comes out. 
And the scripture says, when he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. You know what Jesus did? He put out his hand and touched him. That touch probably went through him like electricity. Because no one wanted to touch him. And Jesus said, I am willing. Be cleansed. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. So we saw how Jesus manifested his love to a, to a leper. The least. The outcast. The unclean. Which represents all of us in our sin. Amen. We're all diseased. The very next story that Matthew records for us. Was how Jesus manifested his love to a Roman centurion. In Matthew chapter 8 and beginning in verse 5. The Roman centurion came to Jesus pleading Lord. This is, a, this is a Roman centurion. This is a Roman soldier who is given charge over about a hundred other soldiers. This is, a, this is a, a mighty Roman soldier centurion. But somehow this Roman centurion had recognized there was something mighty special about Jesus. And he came. And he said, Lord, my servant is dying at home, paralyzed and dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. And Jesus, the scripture says, he, re, he remarked that he had not found such a great faith, not even in Israel, not even among the Jews that he found such great faith. And the, here is this Roman centurion, this Roman guard is, and he had such great faith. He knew Jesus didn't have to leave where he was. He could just speak a word and heal. Jesus is always touched by our faith. Did you know that? Study that in scripture. Get your Bible and, and, and read through. And, and watch Jesus' response to faith. And Jesus said to the centurion, go your way. And as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. God manifesting his love in Jesus Christ. And Jesus manifesting that love to everyone he came in contact with. I remember the story of the children being brought to Jesus and, and the disciples wanted to shoo the children away. Don't, don't bother Jesus. You know, I'm going to put this in Glenn's, Glenn has his own commentary. But in Glenn's commentary, that reads like this. Jesus looked at them and said, what are you thinking? You bring those children to me. And he blessed them. Jesus loved and he manifested his love at every turn. He manifested his love to demoniacs. He manifested his love to a woman at a well who had been married five times. And the man she was with was not her husband. He manifested his love to the woman caught in adultery. And we could go on and on and on. But here's what I want you to know, my friend. If you want to, if you want to love big, study Jesus. And you'll begin to capture what love is. Amen. You'll begin to capture that. Because he loved everybody. And he valued everybody. Secondly, determined to grow in your relationship with Christ. That's how you do it. You study. 
the one who loves the best. And then you determine to grow in your relationship with Jesus. Listen, I know people get tired of hearing me say, you need to be in the word. You need to grow in your walk with Christ. You need to, you need to spend time in prayer. But, but listen, your relationship with Jesus, your daily walk with him, your daily, your daily love for him and time with him, your priority uh, of making him a part of your life every day, that is vital for you to live out the Christian life. You can't live out the Christian life apart from that. You can't love like you ought to apart from a relationship, a dynamic and ongoing relationship with Jesus. You can't. Quit spending time in the word. Quit coming and worshiping with other believers. Uh, get really slack in your prayer life and watch how you begin to respond to people. It is not a pretty picture. Love Jesus. John 15, 5. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides or lives, resides. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. You want to know how to love people? Love Jesus. You want to know how to love people? Grow in your walk with him every single day. I'm doing something this year. I try to change it up and do something a little different every year and keep it fresh. And, and this year, I, I have a Bible app on my phone, which is back there. I have a Bible app on my phone. And I can pull up, I, I, I join this plan that you read through the Bible in a year. But I love this plan because it has an audio version. So I can, I can listen to scripture as I'm, as I'm in the car. Or I can sit at my kitchen table with a cup of coffee and I can pull up that scripture and I can hit the audio part and I will read the scripture and listen to it. And I love listening to it because whoever recorded this has a British accent. And so I get to read the scripture in a British accent with them. But I get to read it and I get to, I get to hear it. And I am absolutely loving that. And then... When you get through the daily scripture, it has a devotional thought they've written that connects back to every passage of scripture that you just read. And I'm loving that and I'm loving my Jesus time, especially in these days. And I can't tell you the difference it makes in my spirit. I can't tell you, um, listen, listen, life is hard for all of us. There are things going on in all of our lives that can cause us to be down, that call, can cause us to be depressed. There are things in all of our lives that could aggravate us and, and, and make us short-tempered and ill. But, but if I will get into my Jesus time every day, it makes a difference in me. It makes a difference in how I love and how I respond. It makes a difference. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. He who lives or abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. We need the fruit that Jesus develops in us. So study the one who loves the best. Determine to grow in your relationship with Jesus. And the third thing. The third thing is ask the Lord to fill you with the Holy Spirit and help you love the way he does. I believe in praying very honest prayers. This morning, I get up at five o'clock on Sunday mornings and I sat with my coffee and my Bible and today's scripture and I was looking over my notes and I prayed and I asked the Lord to fill me with his spirit. I ask him to do that every day because I need him. And listen, I have the Holy Spirit in me because I'm born again. Amen. And you do too. And when I ask him to fill me with his spirit, it's not like I went to bed and he all leaked out overnight. I still have all of him. There is praise God. I didn't lose any of him. He's a, you can't lose part of him. He's there. And so when I ask him to fill me with his spirit, what I'm really asking him is, Lord, I release myself to you. Fill me so full of you. Let, let me be the one who, who surrenders to you. 
and recognizes that you're with me, that recognizes you're in me, that recognizes your power and your presence and help me to live from that place today. And whenever we begin to get gut honest with the Lord like that and ask him to, to do that, do you know he'll do it? He sure will. As you grow in your walk with the Lord, he will help you love the way he does. Rather than a bad temper or impatience or fault finding or sarcasm or unkindness or suspicion or selfishness or laziness. And, and let me just step out on a limb here and it may break and fall off. But I see too many Christians living there. They're, they're nasty. They have nasty attitudes. They're nasty on Facebook. They're nasty online. They're nasty to their family members. They're nasty to their husbands, to their wives. They're, they're full of sarcasm and selfishness and unkindness and fault finding and impatience and, and short tempers and bad tempers. Instead, the Lord will develop in you the fruit of the Spirit if we will ask Him. What is that? It's love, it's joy, it's peace, it's patience, it's kindness, it's goodness, it's faithfulness, it's gentleness, it's self-control. Galatians 5. Can I just tell you that life is a whole lot more enjoyable living there? Amen? That other stuff will wear you out. It'll kill you. It'll kill everybody around you. We've been through a season in our nation where people are so quick to judge and criticize and condemn. Don't let that be said of you, believer. If you name the name of Christ, be the one that loves. God hasn't called you to be someone's judge. He's called you to love. I love a song, a contemporary song by Josh Wilson. And the title of it is called Revolutionary. And he says, maybe you're not like me. Maybe we, won't, maybe we don't agree. Maybe that doesn't mean we got to be enemies. Maybe we just get brave, take a big leap of faith. Call a truce so you and me can find a better way. Let's take time, open our eyes, look and listen. And we're going to find that we're more alike than we are different. Why does kindness seem revolutionary? When did we let hate become so ordinary? Let's turn it around, flip the script, judge slow, love quick. God help us get revolutionary. So he says, I'm turning the TV down, drowning their voices out. Because I believe that you and me can find some common ground. See, maybe I'm not like you, but I'll walk a mile in your shoes if it means I might see the world the way you do. What would Jesus do? He would love first. He would love first. What would Jesus do? He would love first. And then look for the opportunities to love people. Look for the opportunities to love people. If you'll open your eyes, they're all around. Amen. Amen. Mother Teresa said, if you judge people, you have no time to love them. David Wilkerson said, love is not only something you feel. It is something you do. Love is something we do often before we feel. Amen. Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. And this, the love of God was manifested toward us that God has sent his only 
begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be a propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. We love him because he first loved us. We have more than enough love to give away. Let's do a heart check today on this Valentine's Day. Vaccines are rolling out slowly. Hopefully over this year. We'll begin to normalize in our church and our activities and our churches all around our schools. But I pray that we won't go back to the status quo when it comes to loving people. I pray we will love big. Because God loves big. He loves you big. And what he asks of us is to love big. Leave hatred and all the rest of this stuff to everybody else. You love big. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes this morning? Maybe you're here and you say, Pastor Glenn, I, I, I want to know, first of all, that I'm saved. I want to know that my sins are forgiven. And I would say that's where you need to begin to love people. Just make sure you know Jesus. You can know him by acknowledging your sin and asking him to forgive you. Be willing to turn away from your sin and, and place all of your faith and trust in Christ to save you. You can do that by praying a prayer like this. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me. And thank you that Jesus died on Calvary for my sin. Lord, I'm a sinner. And Jesus, you took my place. Forgive me. Lord, forgive me of all my sin. Lord Jesus, I believe in you. Come into my life. Help me to follow you from this day forward. Thank you for loving me so much. In Jesus' name, if you prayed that prayer today, would you let me know it? On that connection card that, that I pointed out earlier, there's a place you can indicate that today you trusted Christ as your Savior. Don't leave here today until you check that, tear it out, and either hand me that form or drop it in the basket. I want to pray for you. I want to encourage you in your next steps of faith. But do that today. That's critical and important. Now, believers, would you spend a moment with the Father? Would you just ask Him to help you love people and to love others, whether it's your husband or your wife? Maybe, maybe there's some marriages in trouble. Maybe you need help loving your husband or loving your wife at a deeper level. Maybe you've lost that spark. Spend a moment and ask God to help you in that place. And he will if you'll open yourself up to him. Maybe, maybe you're estranged from a family member. Or, or maybe you carry bitterness and anger towards someone. Would you ask the Lord to fill those places with his love? Father, fill us with your spirit. Help us to see people with your eyes. To 
feel for them with your heart. Help us to be the hands and feet of Jesus that, that love them right where they are. Give us a lot of opportunities to tell them about your love for them. Do it in our lives, in our church, in our families. Use us as a church to be a beacon to this community and to the world that God loves so much. Father, we thank you for loving us so much that you gave us Jesus. In his precious name, we pray. Amen. And amen. Thank you for worshiping with us today.